Oh, good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We are going to continue in our book reading, The False Doctrine of the Flat Earth, a contextual perspective of biblical cosmology, provides an explanation of flat earth Bible verses. And it is by our brother in Christ, David Nikhail Wilcoxon. We're in chapter 19, and it is entitled, Be Still and Know That I Am God. All right, Nathan Robertson, I believe was his name. Remember, he is the one that oh was uh, you know really harassing our brother in Christ about this flat earth business and all that and this is one of the scriptures he cites. Nathan cites Psalms 46:10, "Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth." He says that he was perplexed about how he could be still if the earth is spinning and flying through space. But now that he believes that the earth is flat, it makes sense that he needs to stop moving. Oh my goodness. All right. That explanation makes my head spin. No matter what the shape of the earth is, the concept is very straightforward. Amid trouble, we need not fear. For Yahuwah is our strength and our refuge. Wow. Hmm. Flat earthers, how do you defend Psalm 46, 10 being on the list? It's getting crazy in these end times, so let's read the whole chapter to reinforce that our Heavenly Father is in control and that He's our refuge in times of need. God is our refuge and strength, our very help, our very, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear? Though the earth is removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Chapter 20. Earth has pillars and hangs on nothing. Nathan cites 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8, Job chapter 9 verse 6, Job chapter 26 verse 7, and Psalm 75 3. Nathan is saying that the pillars in these verses are literal pillars which are under the flat earth. Wow. First, let's apply logic. In the design of a building, where are pillars placed? On a firm foundation so they can support the structure that's above them. Does it make any sense to place pillars under the flat earth since the pillars would not be mounted on, any, on top of anything solid? No. Rob Skiba shows a drawing of the flat earth like this, which has water above the glass dome and below the flat earth. This means that the pillars below the flat earth are set upon water, which is nonsensical. Rob made a conceptualized design, which he calls, um, I, 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 I pronounce Yahua, Yahua's terra, terrarium. It's ironic that flat earthers reject pictures of the globe earth, saying that they are CGI, but they don't have any pictures, only CGI models. Yeah, true. Rob cites Job 38, 6 to point to the foundations of the flat earth. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? He points out that our Creator is speaking of laying a foundation with a cornerstone that is fastened in place. Rob says, if ever there was a flat earther, anti-globist scripture, this one is it. How do you twist and distort that scripture to fit a rotating earth? Free, <laughs> freely flowing in space. Wow. 
Where is the fastened foundation with a cornerstone in that model? A cornerstone is placed to sustain the principal weight of an edifice. Where would a cornerstone be placed on the flat earth model to sustain the weight of it? Would the cornerstone be placed on open space, on water? You can see that Rob's argument has no merit. Job wasn't describing a literal stone on the corner of the earth, but was pointing to the foundation of the earth. A globe earth with foundations of different materials which make up its core makes more sense. It's ironic that Nathan posted a video about the pillars that are under the domed arch entrance of Brno University. He proclaims that's how the flat earth is set up with pillars underneath to support it, but ignores that the pillars are set on a solid foundation. First Samuel 2, 8, he raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. The word pillars in 1 Samuel 2.8 is not talking about physical pillars. If someone says that a person is a pillar in the community, it means that they're a supportive leader. Figuratively, the pillars of the earth may design the princes of the world, the supreme rulers of it, and the civil magistrates, those who Yahuwah uses for his purposes. The previous verse is talking about lifting people up and making them rich so we can see that the context is about people, not physical pillars. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 7. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 shows that leaders in the early church are symbolized as pillars. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 describes the leaders of Messiah's kingdom as pillars. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Are they physical temple pillars? No, they're leaders in Messiah's assembly of saints. 1 Samuel 2.8 is in a flat earth proof as it's not about physical pillars. Job chapter 9 verse 6, which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble. Oddly, Nathan points to, a verse, to verses to proclaim that the earth is immovable, but when he cites a verse that says that the earth is shaken out of its place. If the earth is shaken out of its place, would the leaders, pillars of the earth tremble? If there is a violent commotion, would the leaders, pillars of the earth not tremble? If the little earth is shaken out of its place, the supports of the flat earth or globe earth will tremble. So there is no way to proclaim that it's a flat earth verse. Job chapter 26 verse 7. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Nathan proclaims that the earth is supported by pillars, which is why the earth is not suspended by anything, from anything. Daniel Valleys in his Circles of the Earth investigation says the earth is not hanging or suspended over nothingness space. The Bible makes it clear that the foundations and pillars are supporting the earth. There isn't anything that the earth that the world is hanging from. It is set upon. Um, it is set upon. A flat earth which is supported by pillars under it negates the point that Job is making that the earth is hung upon nothing. If a statue of King David is mounted on a pillar, do we proclaim that it's hung up it's hung up nothing? No. The Hebrew word for hangs in eighty five eighteen Tala, which means to suspend, to hang up. In the twenty six other verses where the word Tala is used, they all refer to something that is suspended from above, such as people who have been hanged, and none of them point to the object being supported by something below. Ironically, we have pictures of the globe which prove that it hangs on nothing, but we don't have pictures of the flat earth to prove it. We'll discuss this verse in much more detail in another chapter as Nathan mentions it again. Psalm 75, 3. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. 
It's talking about people, the inhabitants, the righteous who will be preserved, though the earth, Eretz, land, country, is laid waste. Once again, the word pillars is pointing to leaders. Psalm 75.10 describes the wicked being cut off from leaders, from leadership, as a horn symbolizes a leader. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Yahuwah supports and establishes a nation with his set-apart people, his pillars who upholds his law and provide justice to the people. Flat earthers, these verses have not proven that the earth is flat. How do you defend them being on the list? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh me my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. Psalm eighteen thirty two through 33 Chapter 21. <clears throat> Earth has a face, a geometrical flat surface. Nathan cites Genesis 129, Genesis 414, Genesis 61, Genesis 67, Genesis 73, Genesis 74, Genesis 89, Genesis 118, Genesis 119, Genesis 4156, Genesis 3212. Exodus, not Genesis, I'm sorry, Exodus 32, 12, Exodus 33, 16, Numbers 12, 3, Deuteronomy 6, 15, Deuteronomy 7, 6, 1 Samuel 20, 15, 1 Kings 13, 34, Job 37, 12, Psalm 104, 30, Jeremiah 25, 26, Jeremiah 28, 16, Ezekiel 34, 6, Ezekiel 38, 20, Ezekiel 39, 14, Amos 9, 6, Amos 9, 8, Zechariah 5, 3, Luke 12, 56, Luke 21, 35, <clears throat> Nathan says that the word face has no application to a globe earth, asking where would the front face of the earth, where would be the front face of the earth? He asks which part of a ball is the face. In the movie Castaway, Chuck Nolan, Tom Hanks, knows which side of a volleyball has a face. The Hebrew word for face in Genesis 1:29 is 6440, penium. The face as the part that turns, used in a great variety of applications, literally and figuratively. 1,890 times used in a great variety of applications, literally and figuratively. Also, with prepositional prefix as a preposition before, etc., except a before, time, against anger as long as battle because of beseech countenance edge employ endure inquire face favor fear of for forefront part form former time for form word from front heaviness himself honorable impudent in it look looketh me meet more than mouth of off, old time, on, open, out of. As you can see, there's a ton of them. So look it up in the Strong's. If you do not have a Strong's, um, I suggest myself go to eSword. I believe it's .org. It could be .net. Download it. It is a free Bible um, study site, I guess you want to say. It's got multiple Bibles. It's got multiple dictionaries. It's got the strong concordance. It's got the lexicon. It, it's got everything. And it's free. So you can look those up yourself if you would. All right. Do any of those words proclaim that the word face is a geometric flat surface? No. That's just Nathan's biased interpretation. Ironically, in the section of his book about the moon, Nathan makes statements to try to disprove that the moon is on an axis, and he points out that the same portion of the moon is always facing you. Wow. He's saying that the face of the moon is on the side that's towards us, so he's proclaiming that a globe-shaped object has a face, but he doesn't understand how a globe Earth has a face. That's amazing. 
Webster's 1828 dictionary defines face in a general sense, the surface of a thing or the face which presents itself to the view of a spectator as the face of the earth, the face of the waters. That definition refutes Nathan's assertion that a globe doesn't have a face and scripture does not say that the earth has a geometrical flat surface. You know, I got to put in there, but you know what? My head is not flat. My head is like a globe. It's like a ball, and I have a face. I just got to put that in there. That's just foolishness. Okay. <clears throat> Daniel Valleys, in his Circle of the Earth Investigation book, says the Bible states that the earth has a face, not a surface. The Bible always refers to the face of the earth 29 times. In solid geometry, a face is a flat, planar surface that forms part of the boundary of a solid object. He's saying that the earth has a face, not a surface. But then in his definition, he says that a face is a surface. Daniel continues, a sphere is a closed surface. There is no boundary and it's not flat or planar. Does a volleyball have a surface? Yes. Daniel's reasoning sounds like a circular logic to me. Read through the verses that, list, that Nathan listed, and you'll see that none of them are describing the shape of the earth. It's tedious to look at the proper context of each verse, but it shows you how Nathan is abusing the scriptures. Genesis 1 to 29, And God said, Behold, I, give you, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. The word earth and the Hebrew word eretz, which isn't pointing to the whole earth but to the land, the ground. Genesis 129 is pointing to herbs and trees growing on the land. Genesis 4.14 4, Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Cain was forced to leave the land that he grew up in, where his family lived, as he was banished to a strange place at a distance from all that he was familiar with, as a punishment upon him. Genesis 6, 1, and it came to pay it pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. People live on the land, on the ground of the earth. Genesis 6, 7, and the Lord said, I will destroy man upon whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. It's saying that the land will be flooded so that they're destroyed. Genesis 7, 3. A fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Birds spread seed around the ground, causing vegetation to grow. Genesis 7, 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. The land was flooded so that every living thing was destroyed. Genesis 8, 9, But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her into unto him, in unto him into the ark. The flood waters covered all of the land on the earth. Genesis 11, 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Men were scattered from Babylon across the land of the earth. Genesis 11.9, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Men were scattered across the land of the earth to separate them. Genesis 41:56 And the famine was over all the face of the earth and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt it's describing famine in the land of Egypt Exodus 32:12 Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people after the Israelites had made a golden calf while Moses was up on the mountain, Yahuwah was going to smite them all and make a great nation from Moses. 
out. Moses pleaded with Yahuwah, pointing out that the Egyptians would mock him if he caused these people to come out of Egypt by miracles, only to smite them himself. So the context is that Yahuwah was going to smite the Israelites who were in the land near Mount Sinai. Exodus 33:16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. It's saying that the Israelites were a distinguished people, a set apart from the other people, groups of the world, who were given the promised land. Numbers 12, 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. It's saying that Moses was meeker than any man in the world. <clears throat> than any other men in the world. Deuteronomy 6, 15. For the Lord God, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Yahuwah is reminding the Israelites that they were captives in Egypt, and if they continue serving pagan gods, he will remove them from their land and send them into captivity again. Sadly, that's what's happened when the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Romans were sent to desolate their land. Oh, one minute, please. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 7, 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Israelites were a set apart people who were favored above Gentiles in other lands. 1 Samuel 20:15. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindred from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. One minute. The Israelites were, let's see, a set-apart people who were favored above Gentiles in other lands. 1 Samuel 20, 15, But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, everyone from the face of the earth. So I think I like missed that part. Okay. David's enemies were cast down as they tried to control his land. 1 Kings 13.34 And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. 1 Kings 13 lists the sins of Jeroboam, which deserved judgment. 1 Kings 14 declares that his son became sick and died. Thus, Jeroboam's house, his lineage of a male successor, his control of the promised land was ended. Psalms 104.30 Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Psalms 104, 29 points to men dying. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled, thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Psalm 104, 30 seems to be proclaiming that though people die, that new generations are born who populate the land. Jeremiah 25, 26, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall, bring, shall drink after them. It's saying that the kings rule the countries, the lands of the world. Jeremiah 28, 16, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. Is he going to cast them off the earth? No, they were removed from the land, from Jerusalem, when Nebuchadnezzar was sent to capture them. Ezekiel 34, 6. My sheep wander through all the mountains, and upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. The previous verses say that they were scattered upon the land because there was no shepherd to guide them and protect them. Ezekiel 38:20 So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. The Strong's Hebrew word for earth is 127 Adama, which means soil from its general redness, country, earth, 
ground, land. It's pointing to men who dwell on the earth, to on the ground, the land, not to the whole earth. Ezekiel thirty nine fourteen, and they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. Ezekiel thirty nine eleven through thirteen is pointing to Gog, and his multitude of people being buried, whose bodies are on the ground of the promised land. Amos nine six, it is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven, and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. This is pointing back to the Genesis flooding of the earth, where water from the deep foundations was released to cover all of the land of the earth. We'll cover this verse in depth in a future chapter. Amos 9.8 Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Was the nation of Israel removed off of the flat earth? No, it's saying that the Israelites would be desolated, but the remnant would be preserved. The next verse tells you the house of Israel is spread out among the nations. For, lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as a corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Amos 9.9 9. Zechariah 5.3 Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. The curse is against the land of Judea for their breach of the law, contempt of the gospel, and the rejection of the promised Messiah. The land was desolated by the Roman army in 70 AD. Luke 12:56. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? It's saying that they know how to look at the sky and clouds to determine how the weather will be in the land of Judea. But they failed to understand the prophecies in Daniel 9, 24 through 27, which foretold that their promised Messiah would appear at that time. Luke twenty one thirty five. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. It can be argued that what Messiah described in Luke 21 took place in that generation. Just as he proclaimed, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Luke twenty one thirty two. If so, then it's pointing to the land of Judea and the judgment of the Jews. If not, then a snare coming upon all people on the earth doesn't prove that it's flat. These 29 verses do not prove that the earth is flat or a globe. The word face, penium, is simply pointing to the ground, the land, or a country. And the context of the verses shows that they're pointing to a particular area of land. Nathan pushes his belief that the earth is flat onto scripture, proclaiming that the word face points to a geometrical flat surface, but the verses did not validate his claim. I can't comprehend this kind of logic, nor can I fathom flat earthers sharing a list with these types of explanations when the context of the verses tells another story. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. First Peter chapter one, verse, a uh, chapter, First Peter chapter three, verse twelve. All right, brothers and sisters, that ends that reading. Pick up next time. Until then, I want you to please go to the Lord in prayer, seek Him seek his face seek his wisdom ask him to fill you full of his precious holy spirit who will lead you and guide you and teach you because he is our teacher always go to the lord never take man's word for anything go to the lord go to the word of god search out the scriptures to see if these things are so i love you all so very much keep your eyes on jesus your nose in the book which is the word of god 
and embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Till next time, be blessed, brothers and sisters. Be blessed.